Welcome to Hashtag No Filter Healthcare Podcast. This is where reality meets medicine, raw, unscripted, and uncensored. Co-hosted by healthcare aficionados, Taylor Dunn and Tamara Donda. Ready to deep dive into the heart of healthcare? No filter, just facts. Let's get started. Welcome to Hashtag No Filter Healthcare. I'm your co-host, Taylor Dunn, and today I'm going solo, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Thompson, the SVP of sales at Pure Logic. Great to have you here today, Chris. Thanks for having me, Taylor. Pumped to be here. I always love a good no filter chat. <laughs> me too. It's my that's my favorite. Um, you know, we are huge fans of Pure Logic. I love the team you guys have and what you guys are doing within the dental industry. So I'm really excited to speak to you about, you know, where you ended up at Pure Logic and a little bit about your your background, and then also kind of get into some questions about, um, you know, what you guys are doing um, in the technology space. Sounds good, and, and vice versa for Uptime Health. I feel like I feel like we're like uh, corporate friends, you know. We're, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's hear about your background a little bit, and then um, how you ended up in your role at Pure Logic. Sure. So uh, man, I don't. Whew, so I'm getting old. Um, so <laughs> I've been in dental sales and sales related functions for about ten years now. Um, was really kind of always in big company um big corporations johnson and johnson invisalign and somewhere over the years kind of got the crazy startup bug so um, most people i know including my wife think i'm insane which may be true um but just really love the startup world the environment the hustle the grind um you name it you know really just just fell in love with that so i i was actually uh at a previous ai dental company and met our ceo ryan uh, and found out that Pure Logic was in my backyard in Scottsdale. And then I learned about the technology. I learned about the opportunity. Um, really had the the benefit of knowing market trends and what's going on in these dental offices. And I was like, man, this is this is a match made in heaven, especially being right in Scottsdale. So made the jump about seven eight months ago, and it's been it's just been gangbusters ever since. Amazing. I can relate to the the startup bug. I and it's interesting. I never knew I'd be. I'd be where I'm at, you know, never thought, oh yeah, I want to be in a startup, but it's the mo most fun I've ever had ever. <laughs> yeah, most fun. It's the hard, it's like kids, right? Like it's oh, yeah. the hardest thing you ever do, but it's the most rewarding thing. You think exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Every day I'm like, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> right. I never, you know, that's the thing. I mean, we could have a whole conversation about startups, but like <laughs> no day is awesome. You know, there's always something that goes wrong every day, but at the end of it, you're like, wow, like I, I actually had a hand in, doing that, which is pretty right. Rewarding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You look back and you're like, I can't believe we accomplished all that. Like that's kind of mind blowing. But anyway, we're, we're getting off topic here. That's definitely another podcast we should probably record because that sounds like fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. But let's get into some questions here. I want to, I want to learn more about peer logic. So um, can you explain to us how peer logic is leveraging AI technology? I know you guys you know, analyze phone calls and then transform them in, into opportunities. But can you kind of elaborate on what, what you guys are doing there? Yeah, so it's really cool. We have our own AI module. We have our own speech to text that we built in house. And what I like, it's crazy. Our AI has only solely been trained on dental calls. So we don't train it on the internet. Like we don't train it on anything else. It's solely on actual dental calls. So we've listened to over 25 million minutes of dental calls, which it's crazy. So unless there's something like really off the wall, if it's happened on a dental call, we probably heard it. As everyone knows, the AI gets smarter over time. So it gets better and better and better. Um, so that that's just what we started with. Um, and what we aim to do is not only give offices an analytics platform, we actually want to provide insight. So everything in our tool is actionable and should drive revenue. So Basically, the easy way to think about it is AI, you know, listens to every call. Obviously, like you said, finds high value opportunities, meaning uh, patients that called should have booked and did not. We can flag those, send them to the office. We find that when the office listens to that call or reads it, they uh, and call that calls that patient back, they're booking at like a 65 percent clip. And these are people that call every day. Hey, you know, I'm asking about the cost of a crown or do you guys offer Invisalign. Those patients just go to the wind every single day. We can help capture those. The second part is such an easy one, but often overlooked is our average practices miss 40% of every call coming in the office. So we have a really cool 
AI algorithm that can identify what type of missed call that is. So one of our main takeaways is offices are busy. They're not missing calls on purpose. They're not messing up calls on purpose. They have 4 million things going on. We're able to say, hey, Taylor, your office missed 100 calls. We scrubbed out the business calls. We scrubbed out the vendor calls. We scrubbed out existing patients, which you're still going to call back, but probably not first. Now we flag these 15 calls that are new patients. Let's text them right away. Let's get them called back right away. And we can track all that through our platform. So I, what I love about our, our platform is it's, it's insights that lead to revenue. We're not saying, look at this dashboard and then try to figure out this data. We're telling you exactly what to do, when to do it. And typically when you do it right, we're capturing a lot of revenue. I think it's brilliant. I have some questions about it though. So are you guys doing any kind of automations with the text messages? Or I've also heard in AI, they've developed something where like it can actually sound like a human being is talking to you on the phone <laughs> and it's so, AI. <laughs> so automated text messages, yes. I mean, the next yeah. evolution of AI is gener generative AI, which like you would text with someone in an office and, or, and it wouldn't be a person, right? It would be AI right. and you would never know. Like, it's funny that I'd say a year ago before chat GPT, no one on the planet liked chatbots. Like they were the bane of everyone's right. existence. Like don't, yeah. don't chatbot me, just call me. And now <laughs> since chat GPT, everyone's like, oh, that would be cool if I could do that. So yeah, so currently we don't do it, but very, very hot on the roadmap is what you mentioned around. Like our main mantra is, can we take things off the staff's plate that they shouldn't be doing? I.e. texting, rescheduling, how about uh, on a call for two hours verifying insurance? Like there are, there's technology that we're working on where that could be the voice, right? So there's a lot of, like that's the next wave of all this. But right now it's like, that would be really cool. How about we don't miss 40% of calls? And how about when I do miss that call, let's text the patient back to schedule right away. So there's, it's kind of like low hanging fruit and then we can right. keep hitting things as we go on. Yeah, no, th those are nice to haves, but it's definitely not necessary. I mean, you still want that human element and you just yeah. want to make sure they're getting to the right calls, like you said, and not well, missing opportunities. It's just, and, it makes total sense. Yeah. And the good news is text, like patients love to text, right? The problem yeah. is it doesn't free the office up, right? So um, I walk in and I have 48 text messages. In some ways it's, it's harder than a phone call. Like I, I just recently scheduled with a chiropractor. My back was killing me. And they responded to my text message on average about 40 hours, 48 hours later. So it's like, I could have just called, you know? So that's what we aim to do is like, can you take the text message off the staff's plate through, through AI? And then can you make it so that, so you, you know, you free the staff up to focus on the appointments that really matter, typically new patients. And then obviously making sure existing patients are taken care of too. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I definitely can relate to that delayed text message. So. I like that you guys are thinking about it. Yeah. All right. So, you know, now we got to get into the, the no filter aspect. I want to just, I want to hear something about you, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, so just, you know I know, I know, I know I'm pretty scary. Um, I'm wearing all black also, so I'm just really intimidating today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want you to give it to us straight. So, you know, what's one of the, one of the moments where you're like, what the heck am I doing moment in your career? Like, I want to hear it because we all go through it. We've all experienced it. So what was that moment for you? Great question. Uh, so like we kind of talked about earlier, um, first 15 years of my career, big corporations, uh, products that had market fit, you were kind of a wheel in the cog where like you got placed into a territory, you sold something like like take Invisalign, for example, they're gonna, doctors are going to buy Invisalign. Like, yeah, you, you need to grow it and you need to do more, but like, you're not going to have a territory where they don't buy anything. Right. So when I made the decision to leave Invisalign, it, the last couple startups I've been a part of have, have, when I started, have not really had product market fit. So you're now going into, Hey, I got this big company supporting me. I have all the materials in the world. I have marketing support to one. I don't even know if people want this product. I think they will. And then two, you're, you, it's, you, you live and die. Like you're, you're the number, right? Like you, there's no excuses. You can't have a bad sales month and blame it on the weather or a storm right. or like, it, it's like, Hey, we did this solely because of your efforts. So it's a big bet in yourself moment, which still to this day is scary as hell. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's a lot more rewarding. So that's the moment for me. And then, you know, once you realize you can do it and there's a repeatable process that you can sell anything, like, you get more comfortable with that, but that, 
that feeling never leaves. Like, it, is this person going to buy? And if they don't, it's solely on me. Like, I yeah. want that responsibility, but it's also pretty damn scary. <laughs> I feel like sales is one of the most rewarding departments in a company because you get that moment where you're like, oh, God, am I going to make my quota or, you know, but then when you do, it's like the best feeling in the world. You it's like a high, honestly. Yeah, And like in in big corporations, let's face it, you hit the quarter, you know, you want to hit the year and startups is like, did you hit the day? You know, did you hit the week? Did you hit the month? Did you hit the hour? Like, which is fun. I've come to really love it. But making that transition was a bit of like, oh my, like, whoa, whoa, like now it's on me. Like, you know, step up, man. (laughs) Uh Yeah, no. And then you got to take what you're learning and apply it to, you know, other people in the industry. And, and you're correct. It does not go away. That feeling doesn't matter how successful you are. I feel like everyone's got that little bit in them. That's just kind of fearful that you're not going to, you know, bring forth the best effort that you can, or you're not doing everything you can. It's just, it's instilled in people that I think are motivated. That's yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> in, my, in my day-to-day life, it's probably a character flaw in that, you know, I hate losing more than anything. But in my work life, it's worked out pretty well. <laughs> I I can relate to that. Yeah. I don't I don't like losing either. I'm a sore loser. <laughs> mm. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you being honest there. I mean, it definitely helps to hear that other people are going through that. So I love to ask that question. Um, All right. So let's get back into your expertise a little bit, though. So, you know, given your experience in sales and marketing, what are some strategies that you recommend for dental practices that they can effectively market themselves in this digital age? So it's it's tough. Like, I mean, marketing is competitive. It like it's expensive, it's changing. And I, I do not proclaim to be a dental marketing expert by any means. But what I what I can hopefully proclaim is when you do spend that money and when you do get those people calling into the office, capture every single one of them, every single patient interaction matters. So in terms of like what strategies to actually be successful for like SEO and things like that, that we don't coach on that. But when you do spend money on that patient and that patient and you miss that patient's call and or you don't handle that patient correctly, we can open the whole door to that. And that's really where like AI in general is cool. It it does amazing things, but there's still things offices needs to do. Like I'll give you an example. When we can tie every track, every patient that calls to a marketing campaign number, and then we can tell you everything that happened on the call with no human listeners. So, you know, I had hundred calls from this Facebook ad. I booked X percent. Uh, here's the main reasons we didn't book and you can listen to them. In that, in that case, there's huge opportunities for win backs, meaning maybe you didn't hand, handle it the right way the first time, but someone can call them back and win that patient back. In this case, someone in the office has to review the call and call them back with a, with a better story. So it's not fully without, you know, AI doesn't do everything for you. There's protocols that we work with offices to put in place to capture those, um, which, which does really help. So, I mean, my answer to that question would be like every patient interaction matters. And then the other thing I'll say with Pure Logic, to my knowledge, we're the only one in the dental that in in the dental space that actually uses AI to capture outbound calls. Everyone else out there will will analyze inbound inbound calls, which is important. But new patients and inbound calls are typically 15 percent of your overall calls. We analyze new patients, existing patients, inbound and outbound calls. Now, our offices are getting a ton of information from outbound, meaning those win back opportunities, missed calls, cancel calls, calling them back, open treatment. That's where we can really give you a leg up because, you know, we work with offices where, yeah, new patients are important through marketing, but they're hemorrhaging existing patients. Like, let's plug that gap too. So just a lot of I, long-winded answer there, but make sure every interaction is good. You know. Right. So while you're talking about that, I was thinking about something. Do you guys provide um, like scripts? for when you're talking back to those, you know, clients or uh, patients that you're trying to reach? Is that something that's common? So (laughs) no, and I'll tell you why. We we started early on and we're like, you know, this would be great if we can not only tell them what's happening and then give some best recommendations on what to use. And what we found was a third party company providing a script once a month or a video, you know, once a month to an office, it doesn't work. Like we can bang our heads head against the wall for years and years and they don't look as, as like it, it just doesn't work. So we actually pivoted and we have some great partners and consultants we work with to where it's like a dynamic duo. So, you know, we work with them on scripts and the biggest 
the fun, the most fun part to me has been like a lot of these innovative offices will work with someone that helps them with these things. Now, not only does the practice get insights into everything that's going on, so does the consultant they work with. So it's actually been a huge benefit to consultants because now they can say before, like I wanted to know um, every crown call asking about cost. I'll listen to a hundred calls, which I'll never do. It will take me weeks, which I'll never do. And I'll right. never find the call I want. With pure logic and under two clicks, I can say I want every time a crown was mentioned and we did not book, boom, those calls will pop and you can listen to them or, or read them right away. So it's actually been a really cool um, consultant tool as well, who, you know, who they work with a lot of offices. Yeah. And then what about training? I mean, do they use it for training purposes too? Oh, for sure. So yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that's a no I'm bad. I'm bad. Like I go, I, I think every example I gave was bad, but there's a, like most... <laughs> But most dental calls are good. Like they're, they're polite, they're booking, like people like their dentists. Right. Um, so I would say probably the bigger use case is you have a, like staffing is a big challenge right now. You have a new hire come in, you can pull, Hey, give me every time an implant was booked. Give me every time a crown was booked. Give me an outbound call. You know, you can pull those calls and have them listen to them. And you can also add notes and train them. So we have seen a lot of offices use that for the positive, just to help people get, get up to speed faster. Yeah, I mean, it's right at your fingertips. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? <laughs> yeah, and it's easy. Like that's that's the part is like people don't because it's not easy. Like if you look at your traditional phone carrier, finding just how many calls I missed today is a pain in the neck. So oh, yeah. here, here, like I can tell you every call where someone tried to cancel and did we reschedule or not, what happened? Like, they, like you can find anything you want, which, you know, if it's easy, people will use it. Do you guys have any kind of um, reporting where you can say like, oh, this is what's been trending for phone calls and things like that at each location? Yeah. So you name it, like missed calls, trending over time, um, reasons not booked. Yeah. So that that's the cool part is they can like procedures mentioned over time. They can start to see those things over time to see trends like, hey, um, implants were my seventh most uh, uh, frequent procedure talked about. But last month it was third. Like maybe we should look at doing implants. So there's there's some there's a lot of cool insights you can take like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I mean, I feel like uh, everyone loves some sort of reporting at their fingertips. You know, yeah. come on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's a look under the hood. You know, it's a peek behind exactly. the curtain, whatever you want to call it. It's it's like you don't have to even think about it. It's just right there telling you a story of what's going on. But I think everything that you shared today was just amazing to know that this exists. That it's you know providing more revenue for these dental offices. Um, and it just makes sense. I mean, you guys are doing a great job. I'm, I'm really excited to see what you continue to develop in the tool. So thanks and congrats to you guys too. I know you're killing it. So uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really great to have you today. I know it was a shorter episode um, with Tamara gone and everything, but I really appreciated the time. So. Well, people don't want to hear me for more than 20 minutes. So oh, sure, come on. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, to learn more about Peer Logic, you can visit PeerLogic.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast or comment below if you have any questions. But thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, Taylor.